Dance, dance. That's a disco song. Hold on. What? Hi. Welcome to Tales from the Pool. Yay! It's another week. Um, I really didn't have a... I had a guest, but they didn't come. But my sister is in town, and she doesn't want to show herself on film. Wah. That's her hand. Yeah. Say hi to Shannon, everyone. Say hi again. Hi again. No, put your hand up. There she is. Yay. That's what you'll see of Shannon. God, I have a lot of people that don't want to be on film. But I do have my boobs again. Oh, yeah. My boobs are back. Woo. Here he is in all his glory. Mwah. For those of you who didn't watch my other shows, my boobs, um, this is my dinosaur, and I call him my boobs because, like my real boobs, they're real, and that you can't find hardly anymore, so they're kind of extinct, and they're really old. <laughs> so that's my boobs. Um, so today, I was going to talk about um, Hurricane Irma. I mean, that's like the big news right now, and it's pretty much going to, like, devastate everywhere. And I was really, like, kind of worried about everyone, you know. I don't know where to look. Do I look at the camera? Because Shannon's not on film. So I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh. she's right over here, though. So I will be looking over here at her. So Hurricane Irma, um, my concern are, where are the strippers going to go? I mean, there are a shit ton of strippers in Miami. True. True. Yeah. And... Strippers are not prepared people. Right. No. So. And what are all the guys going to do? Well, they have families. They're fine. They're just going with their families. They're, they're off. They're off, you know, doing their thing. And they're probably prepared and they're fine. My sister thinks that any guy that goes to a strip club is like a perv and has like whatever. We're opposites is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, so these strippers, they, it's not like they have like a savings or, you know, they live day to day. It's not like they put away some water or anything. So where are they going? How are they doing it? My heart goes out to them because I'm like, this is really scary, guys. Maybe there's a strip club that has like multiple floors and they'll be fine. They get to higher ground. Maybe they'll climb the poles. They need to go to, like, Georgia. Or no, that's where the hurricane's headed. I guess they need to go to Canada. Right? Yeah. Let's go to Canada. Yeah. It's I'm sure cold. they need some good strippers. They have a lot of good strippers in Canada. Do you know Montreal has one of the top? They're, like, the best strip clubs in the world. I didn't know that. They do. Yeah. You want the best strip club experience. I hear go to Montreal. Also, another tale from the polls thing, they have the best comedy festival, the Montreal Comedy Festival. So, I saw which, that in a movie. Well, yeah, we did see that. We saw The Big Sick recently. Very good movie. Yes. You agree? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, they talk about the Montreal Comedy Festival. But if you go to the Montreal Comedy Festival, you might as well go visit a strip club there, too. Because they're very good. I, I don't know if they serve food. Because some strip clubs do serve food that's really good. Like Brian, my husband, went to a strip club in Florida on spring break a long time ago with his fraternity brothers. And he said they were eating breakfast at the strip club. He said it was a very odd experience. You know, scrambled eggs, titties, scrambled eggs, titties. Sausage. <laughs> Sausage! Ah, there she goes. She has a sense of humor after all. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I worked at a club in um, Anaheim. They had a lunch buffet. Hmm. I, I never ate on the lunch buffet. I was a little afraid. I don't know. Can you get hepatitis B that way? Dirty food? No. No? I just I didn't feel good about it. A. Oh, hepatitis A is from food. Okay. As long as we, I don't want to be spreading bad facts around, medical facts. You get so. B other ways at strip clubs. Oh, other ways. The back room. The back room. Okay. She has very high thoughts of strip clubs. <laughs> um, also, I was going to say, there is a strip club in Anaheim that I heard has excellent sushi. And that's not even a joke. That is, like, for real. 
And I really want to go there and try the sushi because they're supposed to have like a great sushi. Sh I can't say sushi chef. <laughs> it's supposed to be one of the like best sushi places. So it smells like fish? Yes, it does. It's called the Venetian. I haven't been, but I hear it's very good and I'd love to go and try it. Um, it's only a topless club though. Oh. So not a lot of fish around or fish tacos. <laughs> That's disgusting. Um, <laughs> um, okay, I talked about strippers. I wanted to, I wrote down some notes of what I was going to talk about. It's very awkward without like, you know, my guest on film. Um, oh. <sighs> Oh, last, was it two weeks ago the eclipse happened? Mm, not sure. Was it, two, yeah, whatever it was. Like so I guess Sarah Jessica Parker was um, on TV. Somebody was interviewing her and she had an English accent and she was talking about how beautiful the eclipse was. I, I don't know if I can even do the English accent. Like, oh my God. No, when I do it, I just sound <laughs> like, a valley girl. like a valley girl that's like high or something. Like, this is my English accent. Like, Totally, like, that is amazing. <laughs> okay, I'm stupid. I can't even do it, right? Still <laughs> so Valley Girl. No. Yeah, still Valley Girl. Okay, hi, Valley Girl. That's all I can do. Well, I, I, I guess she gave this interview all with an English accent. Do you guys remember when, do you remember when Madonna went through her phase in the early 90s? Yeah, my sister had no pop culture reference. And again, we're opposite. Madonna went through a total English phase. I think it was like when um, her sex book came out. You remember that? Mm, no, she no. doesn't remember it. <laughs> she remembers nothing. Nothing from the 90s. Oh, Lord. Anyways, for everybody else. Those were my stripper days, and I don't remember. You did not have stripper days. She was a house mom or something. No, that's in a strip club. <laughs> Whatever. She was home taking care of a kid. Um, she came out with a book called, I think it was Sex or something. Anyway, she had an English accent and she was so like Vogue. I think it was right around Vogue too. And I adopted an English accent. You didn't know this because it was only when I got drunk at bars in Ohio when I lived there. And I wanted to be exotic and not be from Ohio. And so when I had enough to drink, I would act like I was from England and I would call myself Victoria. And I'd be like, hello, I'm Victoria. And I'd say it like that. And then, um, you know, it's such a small area where we're from. That I was doing it one night, and this guy goes, um, you're not from England. And I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm from England. And he's like, Aaron, I went to high school with you. I was like, oh. <laughs> so that was bad. That was a bad English accent. It was That not. is a bad English accent. It is, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's an English accent. I know that you can say fag, and that means cigarette, and like lift, and that's like an elevator, and that's all. Oh, did you know that? Mm -hmm. I'm educating here. I don't think I knew that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, it's not like a bad word to say fag in England. I would like a drag of your fag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... um. Did you want to say anything? Not about England. Okay. I have no accent. You have a Midwest accent. I do not. Our mother would say, you speak general, broad, American. That's correct. Yes. So um, when mom found out I was stripping, um, you like to talk about that, that one thing. She was like impressed by how much money I made. <laughs> Silence. Do you hear this? She has no help. <laughs> I'm just going to talk to my boobs now. <laughs> so do you remember that, my boobs? Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, my mother, she said. She was not shocked. She said, wow, how much money do you make? And I told her, and she's like, can I do that? I was like, at the time, she was like 56. I'm like, mom, <laughs> you're pushing it. But there are strip clubs, I don't know if you're aware of this, in uh, Vegas, where they have older strippers, they have breakfast shift. Well, that's like Brian eating breakfast at a strip right. club in Florida. Yeah. But there are older women that work the breakfast shift. Wow. So is yeah. that even worse than like noon on a Tuesday? It is worse than noon on a Tuesday. 
they just push them out, you know, they're like out to pasture even more. So it's like 40 to 50 a.m. is the day stripper. And then 50 plus is the morning stripper, the breakfast stripper. The breakfast stripper. And the breakfast club. The breakfast club. Oh, snap. There you go. <laughs> There's a um, strip club in in Florida. I heard about Oh, Florida again. They better be running. Um, that it's 55 and older. 55 is the youngest the girl can be. Are the, those are the girls or those are the customers? No, they don't give a shit how old the customers are. You can be like 90. Yeah, you can cuss. It's not what I said. Oh, what'd you say? As long as they have money. There you go. You're getting it. You're getting it. Unlike the kids that you drove in carpool. Unlike the kids I drove in carpool. One of my jokes is I got kicked out of carpool. I think I talked about it. I don't know if you saw that or not. Um, true story. I did get kicked out of carpool. Um, one of the moms saw my comedy, like a clip of it or something. And I was talking about stripping and she got very mad because I was driving like five kids around, one being mine. And she... Private school. Private school. And... Snooty. <laughs> yes. And she said um, she couldn't have me, you know, influencing the kids. And I was like, how dare you? You're going to kick me out of carpool? I'm like, they don't even have money. I'm <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. That, so it gave me a good joke, at least. So hand or hats off. I'm like, hands off. <laughs> hands off. Hands <laughs> off. <laughs> hats off to, should I say her name? I don't want to say her name. She's a bitch. Anyways, um... <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Oh, I was going to talk about sayings that, like, from back home. I mean, we don't have accents, but there's fun sayings. Okay. Like, um, Nana used to always say, that's our great-grandma, if you lay with dogs, you get fleas. And I'd be like, mm -hmm. I never understood what that meant. Because, like, if you're going to have sayings, you should probably tell me what it means. Because I'm not, like, quick to get it. And so, like, I would date really bad losers, and then, like, they got in trouble, and then I would get in trouble, and I was like, I'm laying with dogs. Oh! And then you had fleas. And then I had fleas, yeah, like, problems, like, getting in trouble with the law or something, you know, something. And then, like, one got me into stripping. I'm like, here's a flea. <laughs> there it is. So. But it stuck. It stuck, yeah. I made it a positive. I, I turned it around. But I'm just saying, you should explain things to your kids, not just say these little sayings, because I don't quite get it. And um, like the one Uncle Ed always says, it's my favorite. Um, if your aunt had a dick, would it be your uncle? Hmm. That okay. really leaves you in a pondery, you know? A quandary? Quandary. <laughs> I thought it was like Ponderosa. I never understood that either. It's a pondery. <laughs> I still don't understand that one. That one? Okay. If your aunt had a dick, would it be your uncle? I mean, I understand it, but I yeah. don't understand it's kinda it. It's kind of like, oh, maybe I should have did it this way, or I could have done it that way, or what if I did it that way? Well, it doesn't matter because it already happened. So if your aunt has a dick, would it be your uncle? That, you can't sit there and think about these things. You just have to know what you happened or what you did, and it's done. Right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it totally makes sense. I like that one. So thumbs up, Uncle Ed. Don't tell Mom. Okay. We had lots more. Oh, he did have more, but that was someone I liked. Um, Most of them he couldn't repeat, though. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, you don't like me showing my boobs. Well, it's about to fall out. Then I'll just show these boobs. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. Um, let's see what else were we going to talk about. <sighs> oh, I was attracted to a lot of losers in the beginning. Um, like, I... I realized that one day when I was driving by a bus a bus stop, and I thought, oh, my God, there are a lot of cute guys there. I'm like, mm, A school bus? That way. School bus. You're funny. No, no. <laughs> no, no? No. A city bus? City bus. So you weren't in our hometown? No. Because we don't have a city bus. No. I'm from a one-stoplight town. It used to have two. I don't sure. know why. Why? Where'd the other stoplight go? 
I left. There were two. I came home. There were there was one. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I don't know why they took it out. Why? Where'd it go? It's strange. Yeah. Maybe it was too much electricity. Not enough traffic. I'd say more not enough traffic. Not enough traffic. Yeah. That'd be my guess. They were like, we're done. We're done with that. They surveyed it. Decided. Nope. Nope. We don't need this. This is a waste. <clears throat> Minimalism. Minimalism. Do your hand thing on the screen. Show them how you do it. Minimalism. <laughs> That's also an alligator. <laughs> or shut your mouth. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Shut something. Right. It's funny. I'm looking at there, but I'm looking at me. <gasps> um, so... Um, I, I wrote down some of my, like, really favorite people that do comedy. Um, and I thought it would be fun to show some of their clips. Because Tales from the Pole, uh, the, it is about stripping that pole and about comedy pole. You know, microphone. <laughs> so many poles. So, um, did you want to uh, run some of those? or? So, which one is first? Michelle March? Yeah. Okay, one of my good friends. I love her. She has no idea I'm playing her set. But um, I want her on the show. She's a really great friend of mine and comedian. I love her. Her name's Michelle March. So let's watch a clip. And my good friend, dear friend, Michelle March. She is going to be having Together. <laughs> Michelle March! Oh my god, I was really nervous about this show because uh, who knows, but I had to go rub one out in front of the aquarium. <laughs> and, uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if the fish appreciated that. <laughs> Now I know what it feels like to be looked at for a long time by another species. <laughs> uh, I kind of, uh, I kind of figure myself sort of like the, like the uh, lesbian Johnny Cash, you know? Not because I can sing or anything, but because I have this like ring of fire down here. <laughs> and it burns, you know? It burns. It burns. I was, a, I was a, a teacher for a long time, and uh, like 13 years, and uh, at the beginning of my career, uh, I walked into that classroom looking fine, okay, like Sandra Bullock. Oh, uh, now you laugh, now you laugh, and at the end, I thought, more like Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> but I'm pretending it's because of the shirt, you know, that's, you gotta, you gotta help yourself out that way, you know? Um, isn't it weird, like all, you know, like teachers having sex with students? That's like so gross, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, my kids were really ugly the last year. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, so um, at my first year teaching, I would walk in and out of the aisles, you know, checking to see if anybody forgot a backpack or, you know, something like that. And I saw on the desk, it said, some kid wrote on it, Miss March sucks balls. <laughs> <laughs> on the desk. And I was like, oh my God, they think I'm straight. <laughs> they are stupid. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I really like teenagers, and I was teaching history, I love history, love that stuff, love it, you know? And I, and I love teenagers, they're great, you know? But my supervisor, oh God, can anybody have a terrible supervisor or like a boy? Horrible, you know, they just, they just smash you like this, like a bug, you know? And uh, so my supervisor, yeah, it was really difficult, and my, I'm half Latin and half white, where are all the Latinos? Woo! Who speaks Spanish? Um, 
Um, so yeah, I'm half Latin, half white, and I would tell my mom, you know, mom, oh my God, I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown. I can't take it anymore. I mean, my supervisor's driving me crazy. I cannot take it. I, I don't even know if I can go to work anymore. I can't take it. She's like, Michelle, pray for him. Pray for him. I said, mom, I don't wanna pray for him. He's mean to me. He made like six teachers cry this week. Michelle, pray for him. You'll feel much better. So I, I prayed that he died and I feel much better. <laughs> I don't know, growing up, you know, growing up, uh, I was the only lesbian that I knew. I didn't even know I was a lesbian, you know what I'm saying? I, but I know that I was the only one for sure that I knew, except for the one that was sitting on my face. That was, <laughs> that was it. That joke is just for you guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For you, for you, because we're intimate like that, you know? Um, you know, people ask me like what kind of women I like and you know, I kind of, I love all kinds of women. That basically that's what it is. My, my range is 18 to 80. So, <laughs> all good, amen, right, it's all, we're all good. I love women until the end, you know. And, um, but people ask me like, and I have dated like a, a little bit more feminine women, you know, in the past and I, I am now. And, um, and they say like, you know, why, why, uh, you know, why do you like feminine women or this? You know, I figure this, you know, I, I like the girl with, like long nails, short skirts, and I, I figure that uh, I can get a pap smear, and uh, I, I messed up that joke, but that's all right. You know? <laughs> I, I can, here it is, here it is, here it is. I can have an orgasm and a pap smear at the same time. What do you think about that? Is that it's, like, it's hard to find parking, you know, I'm, I'm out that way. It's hard to find parking at Cedar sinai you know what I'm saying? So like, I just wanna stay home and take care of business at home. Okay, I just wanna throw out that for you. Um, I, I live in the valley, and I've always wanted to live like on the west side, or you know, down in Long Beach. Long Beach is happening, oh my God. I love Long Beach, you know? But you know, uh, you know, I've always wanted to live on this side. You know, it's hot up there, and blah, 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 right? Uh, but it was weird, because when I parked the car in West Hollywood just the other night, um, I saw this like drunk guy, like, you know, leaning against the wall. I think he was homeless, you know. Um, there was like broken glass all around. There was like, a, there was like shit on the ground. I know, and I got out the car and I was like, whoa, what's that smell? And then I looked at this guy and I was thinking, wow, I need to look over my, you know, my goals about like where I want to live again because even the homeless don't want to live in the valley. <laughs> so, I would, I would never make fun of homeless people because that's bullshit. You know, I don't make, I'm not that comedian that makes fun of people like that. Like, you know, I don't make fun of homeless people. I don't make fun of fat people. I don't make fun of ugly people. You know why? Because I believe in karma, okay? Why do you think I'm gay? Because <laughs> I used to make fun of some gay people, I didn't. But I didn't know, you know, like most people, you don't know. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so I'm into, I'm into politics, of course, and all that kind of stuff. I teach history, what else was gonna, you know, what else is gonna happen, you know? Um, and I wanna tell you a little story about that. Like, is, it, 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 have you ever, I just wanna know this right now. Do you, have you ever been bitten down here when someone's gone down on you? I'm just, just wondering. <laughs> you know, just, anybody? Come on, anyone? Anyone at all? Somebody in the back? Yeah, have you? Oh, was it him? <laughs> was it Jason Stewart? No. Not yet. Well, guess what? If it's never happened to you, guess what? It hurts like a bitch. It hurts like a bitch, okay? I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? Are you crazy? If you don't know what you're doing down here, don't be down here. Oh my God, get off of my badge. Get out of my bedroom. That's exactly how I feel about the Republican Party. Get off of my badge. Get out of my bedroom. You know, I, I, I don't know why, uh, I don't know why the Christian right like gives us such a hard time, you know, because there's a lot of gay people in the Bible, you know, like uh, Joseph and his technicolor rainbow coat of many colors. <laughs> he was just at the Pantages in Hollywood. Great show, great show. He's a show man, you know? Um, what, what about the three wise men, right? Men in silky robes, all going to a baby shower. <laughs> together, bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's jewelry, perfume, and spices. They're like the original queer eye for the straight god. Can you imagine them going into the manger area, right? Oh my god, this place is a pigsty. It's literally a barn. 
right? I think we should have got him something at Baby Gap. Look at, look at all this hay. No, I mean like, hey, hey, get this hay out of here. We need some new floor coverings, I'm just saying. Uh, okay, that didn't work, that's fine. <laughs> well, I'm gonna add something extra, leave it out again. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know, like, I, I don't know why, um, why, why they give us such a hard time, you know? Like, I, I think we need somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer back, you know, like. <laughs> I mean, he, he was gay, you know? We don't really brag about him very often, but I kind of want to put the, like, uh, phobia back in homophobia, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, they're doing a lot of stuff to us, like Uganda, right? Uh, uh, all those places, Russia, we're having a lot of problems in those places, and I think we need some, like, kick-ass people to come back. Ghosts and, like, you know, live people that are live right now, gay people is what I'm talking about. What I want to see is, like, a Sharknado, but like a gay NATO, you know what I mean? I want, I want the gay NATO to just set down on Russia. People don't know what the fuck is going on. What the hell? Did they bomb us? You know, this big mushroom cloud comes down. And then out of the cloud comes like Liberace with the full candelabra. You know? It just starts hitting people, you know? Marina Navratilova's still alive. Her, Billie Jean King, come out with their tennis rackets and start fucking people up. What I want to see. You know, lesbians can't do everything, boys. You know, come on, we need some help around here. Chase. And you know, it's really hard because, like, uh, you know, my, my friends are all having babies now, right? I mean, it's been like a lot of years now that gay people have been having babies. And, uh, you know, my friends can never go out. It's so annoying, right? I call my lesbian friend, I'm like, hey, girl, you want to go out? And she's like, I can't. The baby has whooping cough. It's like, whoa, shit. Okay, I'll call you like in a month. Uh, All right. I call her again. Hey, girl, you want to go out? She's like, I can't. The baby has croup. Croup? I'm like, that, that baby, is, that, what is she an anti-vaxxer or something? I have no idea. This baby's all sick. I mean, she used to never stay home unless she had a vibrator, you know? She, you know, she, she had a blue mohawk, and now she has a blue baby Bjorn. Uh, yeah! She's like, oh, that's sweet. Oh, she got a baby Bjorn. No, she never gets a I'm telling you right now, this is my opinion, okay? I think that the gay family unit is destroying the very foundation of gay culture. <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna do? Put all the asses back in assless chaps? Right? What, no more sex in the park with strangers? What are they doing to us? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Follow the village people out to Rancho Cucamonga to open up a Chipotle or something? <laughs> they are killing us! We need to be ourselves! What are they gonna do? Spackle up all the glory holes? No! No! And if you don't know what a glory hole is, I'm not gonna tell you today. Thanks so much, my name's Michelle Barnes. And here comes Jason Stewart. Here he comes, here he comes, first place. Hey, that was Michelle March. I said that funny, Michelle March. I don't know, my mouth was moving weird. But I love, I love her comedy. She has this one joke, I didn't hear it there, but it, she talks about a can of lesbians, and if you see this, Michelle, please do that joke again. I know you do it, and you get sick of it, but I love it so much. Um, so check her out anytime, you know, anywhere, like Google her or whatever. Um, but I like what she said about Jeffrey Dahmer. So Jeffrey Dahmer is actually from our same town that we grew up in, our one stoplight town. And when he lived there, it probably had two stoplights. Yes. Yeah. So he grew up two miles, was it two miles or one mile, on Calaboon. He lived on Calaboon, down by where Jan does. Um, so the next street over. Yeah, no, he was on Church Street, right by Jan's house. His yard touched one of those duplexes. Okay. Yeah, so he lived literally like a mile from us. Or a mile and a half. Yeah. Not Thank far. God we're not brown men, <laughs> okay? Because that's all he ate. That's seriously, yeah. I mean, sorry, you know, I well, feel bad. he didn't do that as a child either. No, not as a kid. Only roadkill. Oh, he would have eaten my boobs. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, he did. And so he's the only famous person from our town. Woohoo! Woo, Jeffrey. Woo -hoo. But I would really.
really, I, I, I want to be the one to save that. I, I want to change it. Oh, to, to be famous. Yeah, to be famous, not eat people. Like, I, no, 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 no. I border on vegan sometimes. <laughs> Just watch that that documentary. Whew. Yeah, but what the health? What the health? Yeah, um, I thought that was good, but. Um, I, I remembered we were talking about comedians while we were watching Michelle March, and Ron White is one of my very, very favorite comedians in the world. I love him. Uh, I got to meet him one time, and I just went up to him, and I kind of touched him like, I just think you're so hilarious, and um, or I said, I think you're great, or something like that, and he said something flirtatious back, and I was like, <laughs> so I, it made me happy, but one of my favorite quotes he has said is, because I have dyslexia and um, all kinds of shit. Barely graduated high school. I showed you guys my report card last, or the first show. Um, I love his saying, I'm really smart. You just can't prove it on paper. I'm like, oh, that is said so brilliantly. Don't you agree? I agree. Yeah. So some of us are very smart. You just can't prove it on paper. On that note, do you know what's five miles long? And has an IQ of 40? No. A stripper parade? 40's not good. I, I didn't get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give another joke. I'll keep going. I'll have to think of more. Okay. She's going to keep going. No, you're going to keep going. Um, <laughs> I was reading some of my notes here. Uh, when you're from a small town... You know, you know your neighbors, you live a slower pace of life, and you sometimes accidentally sleep with your cousin. <laughs> uh, it was, I did accidentally, it, it was my third cousin. It's fine. It's fine. Ew. That's what mom said. He was my third cousin, but I just told her I dated him. Anyways. Did you date anyone? I did. I'll tell you about it later. I'll give you names later. I said it once and then, I don't know. It got weird. We'll move on. I don't know if he's still around. It's not a lake, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the last name. <laughs> okay. A crick? A crick. Yeah. <laughs> we crawl daddies. Um, so you were a cocktail waitress first, correct? Yes, I was a cocktail waitress. So I what's the difference between a cocktail waitress and a stripper? What? About one week. Uh, oh. uh, there we go. <laughs> one week. You made it a little longer. I, I was a cocktail waitress for about one month. Two months. I don't know. I don't remember. It was something like that. Well, on that note, one week, um, we will see you again next week. And I promise to have guests that show themselves, show your hand again, and do your little thing. No, you go, mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for coming. Have a great week, and I hope everyone's they safe didn't come. during they just Hurricane watched. Irma. What? They didn't come, they watched. Thank you for watching. Oh, thank you for watching. She said, I said, thank you for coming. But maybe they watched, they, really. They watched. Maybe they came. I don't know. Uh -huh. yeah. Anyways, <laughs> thank you. And my boobs say thank you. <laughs>